Do you like tower defense games? Do you wish you were playing one against the ocean? Actually, I haven't been outside in like three years. Do we even have oceans anymore? Creeper World 3 is a terrible name for a game about a bunch of water taking over the entire universe. Actually, it's pretty slow. That, that's a bit viscous for water, isn't it? Oh, that's why it's called Creeper. Oh. You play as whatever this says in his quest to stop the Loki from gaining control over the quantum state of every subatomic particle in the universe, except you're a bit late. Five billion years late, to be exact. You wake up from hypersleep, only to discover that all signs of intelligent life have been submerged in semen. Y yeah, I, I wasn't going to talk about the graphics, mostly because what I'd written was boring. But then I noticed you can change the creeper color. That's probably very convenient if you're colorblind, except I don't care, because now I can change it to white. So now, rather than being one man's quest to combat rising sea levels, it's become self-defense against the, the cum zone. zone. That's actually what happened. I wrote this bit specifically to justify half my footage having white creeper. I'm also not talking about the sound design. Uh, much like balloons, you listen to it to enjoy the cacophony, or you turn it off to save yourself from tinnitus, then put on a YouTube video to drown out the voices in your head. I just wish I could get the game to run borderless so I wouldn't have to tab out every time I skip that fucking AVGN intro. Uh, guess what? I lied to you. I did just talk about the sound design. The premise alone here was intriguing enough to reel me in, you know, fighting an oncoming tide of water, but I was not expecting this game to be so tightly designed and expertly paced. No design element is needless or wasted, so so it won't be a waste of time to talk about. You open each level by placing your command pod anywhere you want. Next, we throw down some solar panels and reactors. We may be at the mathematical end of the universe, but this is a green operation, goddammit. I would sooner die than create an iota of pollution. Once these start generating power, the energy has to be physically delivered to its destination, and it moves about as fast as Jared Leto going to take a piss. Uh, I guess the developer got the really wrong answer from that Veritasium video. The hell? I'm just kidding, it's actually a genius way to visualize power drain on the system. This is why we build relays. What are we powering? Guns. How do guns help you against water? Uh, I'm not sure. You might have noticed that the water will not stop coming. I guess someone left the faucet on. This is one of the best parts of this game. There is no difficulty curve. Every water source starts with one constant flow rate, and you just have to deal with it. This means you don't have to micro everything like a goddamn StarCraft player. Once you've established a foothold, you can hold off the water indefinitely. Now you're free to move at your own pace to pursue the goals of the level. Your goal is, of course, to shut off the water. I mean, this has got to be costing someone a fortune in water bills, am I right? You do this by placing down an inhibitor. Uh, I mean, you have to develop the logistical infrastructure to expand your line of defense close enough so you can safely deploy, construct, and power an inhibitor. Bam! Level complete. Next subject. Chemical weapons. What do you think about them? Chlorine gas will turn your lungs into soup, and you can't breathe soup. Anti-creeper will, uh... I'm not sure what's going on there, but now you can create little beachheads to build in areas that you don't fully control. The only caveat is that you have to mine it out of the ground, which means you're stuck with a linear flow rate just like the real creeper. I hope you're not feeling too comfortable over there. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you don't make beam towers. This is a universe conquering force. It's not just going to sit there and let you prepare for it, especially when you're sitting right on top of a pile of digitalis. This is the crowning achievement of one of the many human empires, a lattice of self-replicating nanomachines that eats creeper. Except, uh, whoops, the creeper adapted, and now use the digitalis as superhighways to flow uphill. How do you combat this? You can't. You just have to keep it suppressed for long enough to take out the emitter. Okay, I uh, think that about covers it, and by it, I mean the tutorial. There's also terraforming, shields, runners, snipers, airborne warfare, upgrades, and my favorite thing in the game, the big fucking gun. And it's all introduced in such a way to help you understand each thing implicitly before mixing it in with the rest of your toolkit. But in the midst of all this learning and fun having, you might start to wonder why? Why has the creeper buried every trace of human civilization in semen? Why has it left random data vaults intact? And after literal eons of human annihilation, how come you're still here? The creeper is being controlled by a hive mind called the Loki. Of the many human civilizations to rise and eventually fall to the creeper, the most prosperous and successful were the Saloi. Their crowning achievement as a civilization was successfully making contact with the Loki. Uh, hey, we, we know you're gonna kill us and we accept that and all, but uh, why? And the answer? Fuck you.
die. It turns out the creeper hits technologically advanced civilizations the hardest. There was a moment where I thought it was going to go full Teddy K, but that never happened. The creeper isn't really here to kill everyone. It's actually parsing every single piece of information that's ever existed. It turns out to be searching for a single point in space called the Ark Eternal. Hey, just like the name of the game. And what does this arc do? Uh, I have no idea, I just blew it up. I'm just kidding, there's no way you do that on your first playthrough. What actually happens is that you lose, and then you remember, oh yeah, I didn't actually survive that one battle. Mostly because uh, I'm not human. What did the Loki find that made them hellbent on drowning everyone? Me. They found me. This whole thing about fighting the Loki and saving the world was just a bunch of implanted memories I was sifting through to finally locate the Ark Eternal. And what is this Ark? Well, there's a bit of theoretical astrophysics to be known here. The state of shit like protons and subatomic particles have to be described with a wave function, because they're not just in one position with one velocity, they're in every single possible position simultaneously. That is, until you observe them. Then the wave function collapses. Now, this is dumb, this is stupid, so Schrodinger, annoyed by this, came up with the Schrodinger's cat thing. This was never meant as a way to explain quantum mechanics, but rather as a way for Schrodinger to say, hey, uh, this way of looking at things is fucking dumb. So the mathematical basis for multiverse theory is that when we see this wave function collapse, it's not actually collapsing. We're just following that object into an entirely different universe, so we can't observe the rest of the function. Does that make the slightest iota of fucking sense? Uh, no. But the math literally checks out, and there's probably a Nobel Prize in it for anyone who figures out something better. So the Ark Eternal is a singular reference point for not just the entire universe, but every single universe that has ever existed and will ever exist. Assuming control over it is less like conquering the universe, and more like becoming one with all of reality. That being said, I, I did find it really funny that the game gives you the choice between literal, mathematically infinite power and absolutely nothing. Uh, naturally, I grinched out. This turns the game into a little bullet hell minigame that takes way, way too long. Okay, obviously that was the non-canon ending, so let's go back and do it right. I gotta say, this is a really good final challenge. The mothership keeps flying around and dropping new emitters, so all that shit about this being a linear threat goes right out the window. You have to stay on top of your game, aggressively taking new ground while constantly plugging new holes in your network. And, at the end of it all, you assume control of the arc and go back in time to become your own father. I, I have the perfect clip in mind for this, but it's from Red Dwarf and nobody watched that show, so it's not gonna be on YouTube, and I'm sure as hell not about to comb through the box set for it. All three endings give you the same exact text crawl, but only the good ending gives you the slightest bit of context for it. Imagine if other games did that. Like Bioshock still has the exact same A MAN chooses scene, but if you pick the evil path, Andrew Ryan is just never brought up. Wait, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? Oh yeah, nothing. So that was Creeper World 3. I picked it up just because the premise seemed kind of fun, but I was floored by just how tightly everything was designed, paced, and executed. Creeper World 4 is in 3D, so I'm definitely gonna check that out as soon as it's done being expensive. Uh, Knucklecracker, come on man, uh, hook me up. You, you see how many views this has? Like three. This video is gonna tank. Nobody's talking about this game. I, I did this out of love. Come on man, hook me up. I'm an addict over here. Come on. Thank you for watching, G genuinely. This is a filler video because I released an hour of high effort content in the month of May, and I wanted to hit the brakes a little bit in terms of project scope. If you enjoyed this video, please help it out on the algorithm. You know, a like, a comment, even if it's something stupid like a smiley face, I, I do really like those. And if you'd like to see more, subscribe. And if you'd really like to see more, I do have a Patreon and a YouTube membership thing. Becoming a member gives you access to the Teddy K emote. Next video is probably going to be Vanquish, uh, unless the Finnish Mafia figure out where I live and force me to play Finnish games.